I'm Sienna Bowles. Welcome to my channel, Learning Builds Life. And today we are going to talk about the functions of bones. But before we begin, recalling the previous episode, I was talking about the divisions of the skeleton. In that, I will mention the facial, the skull bones, the facial and the cranium. Facial bones and of the cranium. In order of A to Z, like alphabetically, because that's easy to remember. Firstly, ethmoid. Ethmoid. Then we have the frontal. Lacrimal, present near the eyes, as the name suggests. Also, there are glands called lacrimal glands, which produce tears. And now tears are produced in different cases. Even tears are produced all the time for cleaning the eyes. But lacrimal glands, but this is the bone. Then we have maxilla that makes up a huge part of the face. Maxilla in this nasal area is the maxilla. And then we have the mandible. The mandible is basically the lower jaw. Then we have the nasal bone. As the name suggests, it's the nose. Nasal means relating to the nose. As the name suggests, it's relating to the bones at the nose. Then we have occipital. The occipital is present at the back of the skull. It's just one bone. And for information, between the occipital and the frontal, which makes up the cranium, this occipital is a part of the cranium of the skull. And between the frontal and the septal, there is an entire aponeurosis, which is a flat tendon. The, there is an entire aponeurosis called the epicranial aponeurosis. I'm just writing it here at the side, like here, because it's just an extra note. Aponeurosis. And upon neurosis is a flat tendon. And now you may ask, what is a tendon? Well, a tendon is a part which, like it's an extension after the muscle. Now back to what we were discussing, occipital, then we have the periatal, there are two periatals, and these are present in the cranium too, the two sides. And then we have the palatine, making up the roof, roof of the mouth. We have PQ, we, since we're going A to Z order, PQR, we have PQRS, we have the sphenoid. There is also just one sphenoid bone. It is an irregular bone, temporal. Two temporals making up the sides of the head, like the temple we have over here. So like that, that from that's where from the where temporal the temporal bone comes. S T U V the bomer. This is facial. And lastly, we have the zygomatic bones. The zygomatic is basically the cheeks over here. We have the zygomatic. And another thing, the bones of the cranium are attached by sutures. Revising the bones of the face and the cranium, the whole skull, ethmoid, frontal, lacrimal, maxilla, mandible, nasal, occipital, periatal, palatine, sphenoid, the temporal, 
Vollmer, and lastly, Zygomatic. Now we may take a look at the board. Moving on to today's topic, functions of bones. Let's continue with functions of bones. Now, as you know, bones are a constituent part of our body. Without bones, we would all be jiggly wiggly structures, like because only muscles cannot help us in movement. What, whatever we are today is because of bones, muscles, and whatever is in our body. So let's discuss about the functions of bones. The first and most important, first and foremost, it gives it forms a skeleton, which gives us the framework of the body. Forms the skeleton. And gives framework. to the body. As you see, if any bone is misplaced or dislocated, the framework also gets disrupted, and that's the reason we have to go to the doctor to correct a sub, uh, if there's any subluxation, which is a mild dislocation, or we have to correct any dislocation because it disrupts the framework of the body. So firstly, it forms the skeleton and gives framework to the body. The next very important point, like all points are important, of course, the next point is that it gives a surface for attachment of muscles, tendons, ligaments, etc. Attachment for muscles, tendons, ligaments, etc. Ligaments, etc. As you know, all muscles are attached to the bones, like not all muscles. There are some muscles which are skeletal muscles. Those, there are mostly skeletal muscles which are attached to the bones and helps in movement. Also, there are ligaments and tendons, as I explained in the previous section of this video. What were tendons? They were the continuation of the muscles. And for information, a flat tendon is called an aponeurosis. Thirdly, they help they act as levers for the muscles, and that is really understandable. They help the muscles work more efficiently. This is very understandable, as I say, without the bones, we all would be jiggly wiggly structures and would not be able to move. So they act as levers for the muscles. And moving out of the muscles and the framework part, we come to the rest. They also make up 97% of the calcium and phosphorus of our body. Phosphorus. Of our body. 
And this is also very evident as previously I discussed about the composition and the definition of bones. There I say that mostly two thirds of the one third of the bone was connective tissue and two thirds were calcium salts and those included calcium phosphate mainly, then calcium carbonates, traces of other salts, and another inorganic calcium salt which was hydroxyapatite. So that's the rate that's why it's evident that they make up 97% of calcium and phosphorus of our body. Maybe I'll continue, but before that, we may take a look at the board. Let's continue from where we left off. Number five. Another very important property means another function of bones is protection. They protect many or internal organs, like for example, the skull protects the brain. If the skull wouldn't have protected the brain, then every time we got a head injury, it would be a big deal to go to the doctor and check it out because the brain is mainly protect protected by the skull. Secondly, the thoracic cage. That means it makes up the ribs and the whole thorax, the thoracic cage. Protects many abdominal viscera and the lungs. And many other abdominal viscera. Viscera is basically big and important organs. Like all the organs are important, but some organs are a little bigger in size, like the liver, the stomach, and all of that. But Obviously, it's not protecting the stomach. It doesn't go that far. But the thoracic cage protects the lungs and many other abdominal viscera. So another function of bones is protection of many internal organs. Bone marrow produces red blood cells present in the medullary cavity of bones is bone marrow. It produces red blood corpuscles or blue, red blood cells. RBCs. RBCs consist of hemoglobin which gives the red color of blood. But basically bone marrow produ bone marrow produces red blood corpuscles or red blood cells, RBCs. Another property function which is related to bone marrow, bone marrow consists of reticulal and epithelial cells. No, it's a mouthful to say, but I'm just writing it down. Bone marrow consists of reticuloendothelial cells. These reticuloendothelial cells are phagocytic, phagocytic in nature. Bone marrow consists of reticuloendothelial cells, which are phagocytotic in nature and take part in immune system reactions. Now let me explain. System reactions.
Now, the bone marrow consists of reticuloendothelial cells, and phagocytotic means it's having a nature of eating up, eating up, phagocytosis means eating up in a, in a large scale. In this case, eating up means eating up the allergens or whatever external particles which are coming in. That is an immune system reaction that it feel like even if a person has allergies, the pollen or whatever is triggering the allergy that is considered as an allergen inside the body and that will be taken care, care by the immune system and the allergic reaction is the result of the reaction uh, given by the immune system. It can be deadly sometimes in allergies, but we, leaving that part, the bone marrow consists of these cells which take part in immune system reactions. So that's another function. And lastly, the paranasal air sinuses check our timber of voice. Timber basically means the way we talk. Like, I have a voice than anyone in this world has a different way of talking, like a different voice. Everyone's voice is different. So the paranasal air sinuses check, like not check exactly, but like you can leave the word check, but it actually controls the timbre of our voice. Now let's revise this, these points and then you may take a look at the board. So the skull protects the brain and the thoracic cage protects the lungs and many other abdominal viscera. So the property is that it helps in protecting many internal organs. The bone marrow produces red blood corpus cells or RBCs. The bone marrow consists of uh, bone marrow consists of reticulo and epithelial cells, which are phagocytotic. Oh which are phagocytotic in nature and take part in immune system reactions. And the paranasal air sinuses check our timber off, or check our timber of voice. That wasn't necessary. Check the timber off our voice. Now I may take a look at the board. Hope you enjoyed this episode and please like, share and subscribe my channel and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.